Gayla Cuevas and Nisa Mickens were a pair of teenage best friends that had been friends from the time that they were children. Nisa and Kayla had a strong love for the game of basketball and both shared the same goal of someday making it to the pros. The two girls had always stuck together as they were both dealing with bullying and harassment at their school in Brentwood, Long Island for being different from the other girls in the school when it came to how they dressed and their interests. And after being fed up with the constant bullying in school, Kayla Cuevas took to social media to blow off steam by posting quotes and stating how she felt about the bullies at her school. And this would cause Kayla to get into a feud with a group of girls at her school. But what she didn't know is that these weren't ordinary high school girls. These were girls that were affiliated with the ruthless street gang MS-13. And on September 13, 2016, while walking home, this feud would cause Kayla and Nisa to meet a horrific end when they were spotted by two MS-13 members, Selvin Chavez and Enrico Portillo. Portillo and Chavez hopped out their car with baseball bats and machetes and first murdered Nisa Mickens, who would have turned 16 years old the next day. Kayla Cuevas managed to escape by running through a wooded area, but they eventually caught up with her and she was also unfortunately murdered. Both girls were beaten with baseball bats and cut with machetes to the point where they were left unrecognizable. And after being arrested, Portillo and Chavez, who still haven't been sentenced, showed no remorse for their actions as they smiled and waved at the girls' family and friends in court. And days later, a candlelight vigil and a Stop the Violence rally was held at their high school, giving fellow classmates the opportunity to mourn together, as well as celebrate the life of two teenage girls that had their lives cut short due to senseless violence. In North Carolina, a 21-year-old woman named Sierra was involved in a romantic relationship with a man named Ray, who was a member of the United Blood Nation. The two were in a relationship for over a year, but their relationship started to get rocky when Sierra decided that she wanted to transfer to a different college that was out of state. But Ray wasn't too fond of his girlfriend leaving him to go to another state and tried convincing her to stay, but her mind was already made up. And on January 12, 2018, just days before she would be moving to begin her spring semester at her new school, Ray gathered two of his friends who were also gang affiliated and decided to pay a visit to her house. Ray and one of his friends broke into the house through the back door with guns while one stayed outside as the lookout. And after entering the neighbor's house, Sierra and her mother Tracy were both startled, but Tracy, who wasn't their main target, was able to run out the front door and run to the neighbor's house in a state of panic. And the neighbor ended up calling the police for her. 911, where is your emergency? Um, there's a, there's a gunshot. Okay. How many shots did you hear? I, I, we only heard a few, and, and people, the, the, the owner of the house is right here at my house right now crying. I'm sorry, the owner what? of the house is what? Yeah, now? she's right here. She's right here. Relax, relax. Take okay. a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Take a deep What's breath. What's saying happened? Um, I, she doesn't know. She's not, she's not really calling. She's not really saying anything. <sighs> Who, what, Tracy, is that you? You're listening. Who is in your bedroom? You're listening, ma'am. Ma'am, you're listening? Was anybody okay, shot? Somebody shot in the residence? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know where they were shot on their body? Um, I have no idea. I have no idea. I'm just looking into the neighbor screaming across the street right now. Do you know if it's a male or female? I have no idea. No. I have no clue. Does she know who it is that's shot in her bedroom? Um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hello. 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 Hello? I can't hear. I can't hear. I can't hear. My baby's... Tell me what happened, ma'am. Huh? Tell me what happened. All of a sudden, my daughter and I were sitting on the couch. Uh-huh. These two guys came in. They were... They had these things around their faces. And Santa had his been hoodies on with guns. Okay, so there and were, they were two men? To shut up them. Like, okay, there were two men, you said? <laughs> Ma'am, can you hear me? Although Tracy survived, she had to experience something arguably worse than being killed. Listening to your own child being shot multiple times and not being able to do anything about it. It didn't take long for police to put the pieces together and realize that Ray was responsible for the murder and arrest him. But who his two friends are is still unknown as he refused to tell police who they are. In East 
New York take one ever sleep was a man that was simply caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. While out visiting a local deli, Taekwon noticed a group of men staring at him, so he decided that it would be in his best interest to leave. But after leaving the deli, the group of men followed him out, and so he walked across the street and tried hiding behind a car. But then the group of men started to chase him. Eversley ran to the back of someone's yard trying to escape while the men continued to chase him. But unfortunately for Taekwon, he didn't run fast enough. And after jumping over a wall and falling to the ground, he had a cinder block thrown at his head and was shot eight times and pronounced dead on arrival. In the end, it turned out that Taekwon was mistaken for somebody from a rival gang, as the men that were chasing him were members of the Blood Gang and thought that Taekwon had ran because he believed he had been caught slipping. In Philadelphia, a homeless man named Robert Barnes decided that to make a little money, he would stand at the gas station and offer to pump people's gas for them. But when three teens saw that Barnes was making a decent amount of cash, they tried to intimidate him to give them his money. But when Barnes refused, they left and came back this time with three women who are known Crip gang members and launched a vicious attack on the homeless man beating him with a hammer and stomping on his face and head before getting back in the car and driving off. Barnes was taken to the hospital in critical condition, but unfortunately passed away after his brain swelled to the point that his cranial cavity could no longer hold it. Eventually, the three women were sentenced to 45 years in prison, and the teenage boys were charged as adults and sentenced to 22 years. In New York, a man named Robert was home enjoying his Friday night with his wife and kids, but his family's night would take a turn for the worse when a man that looked like a pizza delivery driver would ring their doorbell. Once Robert opened the door, the man forced his way inside along with three other men that were hiding behind him. And according to his wife, the men were there to rob them, but Robert decided to try to fight the men off. This is when one of the men shot Robert four times in front of his daughter before ransacking the house and running out the back door. And once the men left, Robert's wife called police. But by the time they arrived, it was too late and he was already pronounced DOA. 